Welcome home. Welcome home to Center Point Community Church. We're also welcoming, we are here at uh, Center Point Church's worship room. We are properly socially distanced and masked, right? Everybody enjoying that? Maybe not. But we're also live. We're welcoming a live stream audience. So we have the potential to uh, send the service around the world. That means you guys need to sing well and sound good, right? Actually, good morning. We're so welcome. We're so glad to have you here. Uh, and uh, thank you for your cooperation, your good spirit, and kind of just for the sake of others, for love of other people and community. I'm going to go over the top caution, right? I think that's, that's love, right? That's how we're going to love people. And uh, I don't want, I'm, my prayer is that this is not the place, this is not a place from which the coronavirus spreads. I just pray that God will keep that from happening. But we are here, we're a little hungry to rock a little bit today. So we're going to sing loud and vigorous and give praise to God as we worship today. So welcome to Center Point. welcome home, let's worship. Hey, if you'll stand, good morning. How's everyone? Are we ready to worship the Lord this morning? Psalm 133 says, How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. For there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. Hallelujah. So let's worship, let's rock, let's celebrate, because he has been good and faithful throughout this coronavirus. Amen. Amen. God is faithful. He is good. In Jesus' name. Shout a song of praise to him who deserves 
Hallelujah. Psalm 126 says this. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter and our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we are filled with joy. Amen. He's our way maker. He works miracles all the time. You are so good. I worship you. 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 I worship you.
worship you. I worship you. You are here, demanding every heart. I worship you. I worship you. Cause you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Cause you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Way maker, cause you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Let's sing it. Cause you are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. That is who you are. to the book of Revelation. Revelation 1 says this. Blessed is the one who reads out loud the words of this prophecy. And blessed are those who hear it and take to heart what is written in it because the time is near. Grace and peace to you from him who is who was and who is to come, 
and from the seven spirits before his throat, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sin by his blood and has made us to be a kingdom and priests to serve his God and Father. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. And look, he is coming with the clouds. And every eye will see him even those who pierced him, and all the peoples on earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord, who was and who is and who is to come, the Mighty One. He is coming back. He is coming back. He said so. Amen. He is the faithful witness. Right now, things don't look very good in the world, do they? The economy has gone down, and it's not just ours, it's globally. People are sick, they're infected, they're dying. People have fear, they're looking for hope. But even in the midst of all that, God is moving. And it's you and my job as the people of God to discern the times. Discern and ask the Spirit, what are you doing? What can I do? How can I minister to my neighbor, to the people at my work? How can I show your love? How can I give them hope? Because he is coming back. Maranatha, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Move in our midst. Hallelujah. is coming soon. All of creation, all of the earth, make straight a highway, a path for the Lord. Jesus is coming soon. Call back the sinner, wake up the saint, let every nation shout of your fame. Jesus is coming soon. Like a bride waiting for her groom, will be a church ready for you. Every heart longing for our King, we sing, even so come. Lord Jesus, come. Even so, come. Even so, come. Lord Jesus, come. There will be justice, all will be new. Your name forever, faithful and true. Jesus is coming. Like a bride waiting for her groom will be a church ready for you. Every heart longing for our King we see. Like a bride waiting for her groom will be a church ready for you. Every heart longing for our King we sing, even so come, Lord Jesus, come. It's the cry of our hearts, even so come, Lord Jesus, come. So we'll wait, so we'll wait, we'll wait for you. The King of Kings, God, we'll wait. You're coming soon. So we'll wait, we'll wait for you. God, we'll wait. You're coming soon. So we'll 
we'll wait. So we'll wait. We'll wait for you. God will wait. Your With all our hearts, God will wait your coming soon. Like a bride waiting for her groom, we'll be a church ready for you. Every heart longing for our King, we see. Like a bride waiting. A church ready for you. Every heart longing for our King, we sing. Even so, come, Lord Jesus, come. Even so, come, Lord Jesus, come. Even so, come. Even so. Lord Jesus, come. One more time. Even so, come. Lord Jesus, come. Lord Jesus, come. Yes. We are here because we know, God, that you're coming. Yes. Thank you, God. Thank you because we believe in the second coming and we are here, God, waiting for that moment. Prepare our heart, God, so we can receive, so we can receive you and we can receive that coming, God. Thank you. And thank you, God, because this day is a special day, God, because we are here worship your name, God. And we are here in our church. We are here, God, and we can see our family again. Thank you, God. Thank you for that opportunity. And thank you, God, also because you protect us, God. Thank you, God. Thank you. And we pray it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, guys. You can take a seat with uh, our formatting right now, just getting started. Uh, at this time, we're going to have our, our kids' point lesson. Hello, where are you? Where are you? Where'd you go? Where? 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 Oh, oh, am I ever relieved to see you and you and all of you. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. Oh, I was all by myself in that room and there was nobody there. Have you ever been all by yourself? Have you ever been alone? It's scary. You look around, there's nobody familiar. There's nobody there. It's scary. Have you ever been alone? You ever maybe been out in a crowd and you lose sight of your folks or your family or the people you're with? Maybe you're in the store and your mom can't, you can't see your mom or your dad or you're out in the park and it's scary to be alone. I've been alone and it doesn't feel good. I don't like it. Take that thought, that feeling of aloneness and travel back with me about 2,000 years you might remember a few weeks ago we talked about Jesus and when he died on the cross and how his friends felt so alone. Everything they had planned was gone. They had planned on Jesus being their king and ruling everything, and he died. Boom. Everything stopped. They were crushed. They felt abandoned and alone, way worse than being lost in a crowd. They felt alone. But then three days later, remember, that was so exciting, when Jesus came alive again and Mary was running around yelling, ah, he's alive, he's alive, he's alive, and everyone was just going crazy because Jesus was back and it was everything they had dreamed of, and they thought, okay, we're back on track. This is exactly the way it's supposed to be. And they were so wonderfully excited, and I can imagine they stuck like glue, especially that Thomas, remember? Because he wasn't there the first time, but I'll bet every time he saw Jesus, he was like right next to him. Yeah, Jesus, I'm here. I'm here. Don't worry. I'm here. And so they, they were so excited to have Jesus back. It was everything they had dreamed, and they thought, thought that finally things were going to be the way they thought. But Jesus kept saying things that were confusing to them. But 
we've been saying a lot of confusing things all those years, kids, and you might remember that. We've talked about some of those things. And he said things now about, like, I'm going to be going to heaven. Well, good, thought his disciples. We want to go to heaven, too. In fact, we're planning on going to heaven when you go to heaven. But it wasn't quite what Jesus meant, but they didn't understand but he didn't stop. He kept telling them. And he says, and I have a job for you. You're going to go tell everybody about me. You're going to start with the people next door and then down the street and then across town and then in the next village and then in the next city and then in the next country and around the world and you tell the whole world knows about me. This sounds great, thought the disciples. We can't wait. This is so wonderful. We get to go be Jesus tellers. We get to tell people about this wonderful Jesus. This is so great. And here he is with us, and we're going to just have a great time. But he kept saying confusing things like, I'm going to go back to my father, and I'm going to send someone else to help you. Didn't always make sense to them. Sometimes things don't make sense to us, do they, boys and girls, grown-ups? Sometimes they don't. But that's okay, because they listened, and they paid attention, and sure enough, one day when Jesus was out with his friends, they'd gone up to a mountain, and Jesus was talking, and he says, again, these confusing words, I'm going to go to heaven and see my father, but I'm going to send someone else for you, and you're going to be able to tell everyone about me. And as he's talking, all of a sudden, they noticed something most unusual. He started going up, and up, and up. Boys and girls, I want to see your shocked face. Well, I know you're all covered with masks, so I'll do it for you, okay? <gasps> they just couldn't believe it, and they're watching him, and he's going up, 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 up. Pretty soon, he's up in the clouds, and, and they see the, the edge of his robe and the tip of his toes, and he's gone. And I don't know about you, but when I'm shocked, I either talk nonstop and you just want to pinch my lips shut, or I just stand there... And I kind of think that's what the disciples did. They were just, they couldn't believe it. Their plans were once again confused. They thought he was going to be king, then he died. Then he rose again, things are looking good, now he's leaving. What is going on? So sure enough, he is gone. And they're just standing there, staring, trying to process what is going on? And trying to remember those things he'd said. You know, like when your parents tell you stuff and you don't remember, and you think later, oh, I should have paid more attention. I think that's what they were thinking. And pretty soon, two men show up. They were angels. The angels showed up, and they said, what are you doing? And I have to laugh, because I think of these disciples standing there, and they're all just going. And these two angels show up, and they go, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> excuse me, what are you guys doing? And sure enough, oh, oh, um, what, what, do we, did you see what we just saw? He just went to heaven. And the angel said, what did he tell you? I almost can hear the patience, but slight annoyance. You know, like when your parents have told you stuff over and over and over again. What did he tell you? <gasps> he said, we're going to go tell everyone about him. And sure enough, that's what they did. And so those men who had followed Jesus for three years or more, had watched his miracles, had felt abandoned when he died, thrilled when he came back, abandoned maybe again, but God said, don't worry, I'm sending someone with you. And God, the Holy Spirit, came. And so boys and girls, the verse I want you to remember today is Jesus said, I am always with you. So when you are alone, when you are afraid, those scary nights in the dark, if you're sick, when things aren't going right, when life happens and it throws you off, Jesus is always with us. It is Memorial Weekend, and so we want to take just a few moments to honor and pay tribute to the reason for the weekend, and that's to remember our heroes who gave their lives, who paid the ultimate price for our freedom. Let's watch.
gratitude, appreciation, and remembrance to those who gave their lives in military conflict for our liberty down through the years. We appreciate. I have a few quotes I just thought were pertinent to share. Dwight Eisenhower, President Eisenhower, a people that values its privileges above its principles soon loses both. President Ronald Reagan, I don't have to tell you how fragile this precious gift of freedom is. Every time we hear, watch, or read the news, we are reminded that liberty is a rare commodity in this world. President Thomas Jefferson, the price of freedom is eternal vigilance. Joseph Campbell, a hero is someone who has given his or her life to something bigger than oneself. And William Penn, founder of the colony of Pennsylvania, death is no more than a turning of us over from time to eternity. We pay tribute, we honor those who paid the price, made the ultimate sacrifice for our freedom. We are here to study God's Word today, and what a privilege that is to do that in person. You are not a camera stand and a cell phone. It's been very, very strange, um, but very good. I appreciate the support and those of you guys who sort of toughed it out with us as we stumbled to figure out how to handle ministry during the coronavirus pandemic. But you know, one thing that we've got to say is now more than ever, the gospel has been preached to all the world, all across the internet and all across cyberspace. The gospel has been proclaimed more than ever before. That's one of the things Jesus said would happen before his coming. Now, due to the coronavirus pandemic, how many of us in recent weeks have used either Zoom, Skype, Google, Google Meet, or FaceTime? Raise your hand. What do the rest of you even do? <laughs> Isn't that all there is to do? <laughs> right, so I have to credit Progressive Insurance has had some clever commercials where their team members are, are on Zoom, and they're pretty comical. But my favorite story that I found was uh, a, a married couple. Uh, her name is Kara Fields. Her husband's name is Matthew. And both of them had to establish a home office and work from home. So every time Kara would get on her office calls, her husband would wear a costume. So in the background, one day he was Batman. <laughs> one day he was Waldo. I like the Waldo one. One day he was a cowboy. And on, I, it's hard to see the one on this side. He looks like he's a mountain man. He came down out of the mountains. Um, is that Ant-Man? Who is that? Somebody's going to have to help me. on the. It's a Power Ranger. I don't know. And I'm not even sure what the one on the right is either. Friday the 13th, what do you guys watch? <laughs> Yeah, I don't watch. That's what, when you're not in church, you're watching Jason and Friday the 13th. So it's funny that Kara was not too happy. Um, she didn't realize her husband was doing this at first. <laughs> and she wasn't too happy. But later on, since it, was, it became very popular, um, she kind of tolerated it. You know, lots of things today are moving to the cloud. Have you heard that? The technology is moving to the cloud because hard drives can only handle so much data. So I, I, I do virtual storage with Carbonite, maybe use some other provider, but we store. If you store in the cloud when your hard drive crashes, it's still there. Hopefully all their systems don't crash too, but you're storing it on the cloud. Now they're having all sorts of networking and software that's cloud-based. So it's less resource intensive on your, your own computer hardware, and it's operating virtually through the cloud. I want to say today that just as Miss Peggy told the kids, when, when Jesus went up into the clouds, he told them, I'm going to my Father. Did he not tell them that? I'm going to my Father, and I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. He told, But just as he told them he would die and rise again, and they couldn't quite 
figure it out. He told them, I'm going to my father, and they couldn't figure that out either until 40 days after Easter. 40 days after Easter, he ascended into heaven. He ascended into the clouds. And so today, today we're going to talk about what I call cloud-based living. Cloud-based living for those of us. Because of Jesus' ascension, we should live in the clouds. Our, our lives as followers of Jesus should be cloud-based, meaning that Jesus came down from heaven, lived a perfect life, died a sacrifice for our sins, was raised again to life through the resurrection Easter Sunday, showed himself and taught the disciples for 40 more days before he ascended into heaven, and then he left his kingdom in our hands while we wait for his return from the clouds. So my life and your life is to be cloud-based. I want to talk to you this morning about cloud-based living. need two Bible passages, uh, so it's best if you have your own Bible with you or your Bible app. Um, Matthew chapter 28, very familiar. Both of these passages very familiar. Matthew 28 and Acts 1. So I'm sorry they're not right together, but Matthew 28 and Acts chapter 1. Now, I'm a weirdo when I fly. A lot of people who fly often, I'm not saying I fly that often, but... They prefer the aisle seat. The aisle seat is better if you have to go to the bathroom, right? It's really hard to climb over people. I don't even know what they're going to do on airplanes now, right? But I like the window. Because Dwayne plasters his face against the glass. I'm not going to do that anymore. <laughs> not without hand sanitizer. And you know what I do? I just watch. Look, when you're flying... I, when you're flying, aren't clouds amazing? I mean, clouds, you're like, I just want to jump out in it. Probably not a good idea, right? Is they're so beautiful. I want my, now you know what? Sometimes we say of people who are kind of, mm, they've got their head in the clouds, right? I want you guys, I want us to learn to have our hearts in the clouds because Jesus ascended into heaven. Now, today is actually Ascension Sunday. And next Sunday is the, day of, the Sunday of Pentecost. Pentecost. So we're going to be looking at these two critical things. So we're going to read God's Word right now. So Matthew 28, verses 16 to 20. And then we're going to go to Acts uh, chapter 1, the first 14 verses. So this is the Word of God. Would you guys stand as we reverence God's Word and read together from Acts chapter... Pardon me. Pardon me. First of all, from Matthew chapter 28. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Interesting line, isn't it? Verse 18. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And didn't Mrs. Hunt do that with the kids? I am with you always. Jesus told us that, right? He ascended to his Father in the clouds. He's sitting at the right hand of God, waiting for his return when the time is right. But he is still with us always in the person of the Holy Spirit. Now let's go to the book of Acts, chapter 1. We're going to put these things together today. Acts is written by Luke, who wrote the Gospel of Luke, human author, and so Luke begins with, in my former book, Theophilus, which means lover of God, in my former book, which is the Gospel of Luke, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days 
and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my Father has promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or the dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he had said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. That's what Mrs. Hunt talked about. Verse 10. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. The same Jesus will come back. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. That's about one kilometer. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying, and those present were Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus. And with his brothers. The word of the Lord may it not return void, right? Never does. You may be seated. Thank you, guys. Ascension Sunday. Now, in recent weeks at Center Point, we've been studying from the Gospels individuals and groups that had face time with Jesus, one on one or in small groups. They were all changed and transformed by that face time with Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God with us, our Savior. Acts chapter 1, verse 3, if you noticed it, and keep it there. It tells us that after his resurrection, Jesus appeared to his disciples over a period of 40 days, always significant in Scripture, convincing them of his resurrection and teaching them about the kingdom of God in preparation for his ascension and for them carrying on his work. Jesus left us here on earth to do his work. Now, nearing the end of his time on earth, he takes his disciples to a mountain where he gives them his great commission. And then, about a week later, after some final instructions, he ascends into heaven. God the Son, who came to earth to seek and to save, to be one of us and to execute the plan to bring us back to God through him. Now that his work on earth is done, he ascends into heaven and sits down at the right hand of the throne of God the Father, and he leaves his ministry for us to continue, his ministry in our hands. Pretty awesome, isn't it? So after the resurrection... How long before the ascension? Did you catch it? 40 days. Okay? 40 days before Jesus ascended into heaven. Just to kind of put some timelines, this is looking a little different here than it did for me. Um, Easter Sunday, probably April 9th, uh, AD 30. Um, Easter Sunday night, Jesus appears to the ten. A week later, on April 16th, he appears to the apostles, Thomas included. Early May, Jesus appears to a group of seven apostles, and he restores Peter. And that's what we did in our message last week. About the middle of May in A.D. 30, Jesus takes 
his apostles to a mountaintop in Galilee where he gives them the Great Commission. Matthew 28, the Great Commission. And about a week later, if you use April 9th for Easter, it would be May 18th, AD 30, Jesus ascends to heaven from the Mount of Olives. So these are a map. A map this is a map of Jesus' resurrection appearances. Most of them happen in the Jerusalem area. But we've just seen two last week and this week. Jesus appears to them up in Galilee. Remember, Jesus told his apostles that he would see them in Galilee. They saw him in Jerusalem, but he also went up to Galilee. Last week, on the Sea of Galilee, and this week, on the mountaintop, where he gives them the Great Commission. A week later, they're back down in Jerusalem, and number eight uh, would be on the Mount of Olives near Bethany, where Jesus ascends into heaven. So the one who ascended into heaven, left us with clear instructions about his purpose and his priorities for our lives. The last two recorded historical events of Jesus' time on earth are the Great Commission and the Ascension, right? So those are the last two historical appearances of Jesus before he went to heaven. And they show us that we are to commit our lives to what I call cloud-based living. The traditional site for the Great Commission is rather unknown. It says, to a mountain where Jesus had told them to go. But the word is very important in Matthew 28, 16. It means that Jesus actually, he ordered or arranged this. Nothing was accidental. There was a specific mountain. And the mountain that seems to be the best candidate, if you go up to Galilee, is called Mount Arbel, right here, uh, right along the Sea of Galilee. Look over here, and here it is again. Right along this crescent, you have Tabga, where Peter was restored. You have Capernaum, uh, Jesus' hometown for his ministry. The ascension happens again in Jerusalem, right? We go back to Jerusalem, and Jesus ascends from the Mount of Olives overlooking the city. So uh, from the Mount of Olives, probably in this vicinity, is where Jesus ascended. This is Mount Arbel, if you visit the Holy Land yourself. From the Sea of Galilee, there's the point. And it meets the criteria because it's a mountain, but it's also pretty level. So it could be the site for the Sermon on the Mount. Luke says it was a level place, Um, although there's another traditional site. But I think it's the best site for the Great Commission, and I'll tell you why. Look at the view from Mount Arbel over the Sea of Galilee. Mount Arbel right now is a national park in, in Israel. It's very beautiful scenery, Uh, very natural oriented. But from the top of Mount Arbel, you can look and you're looking into what was called the Decapolis in those days and you're looking into Syria. Even now you're looking into Syria on the far side. You're looking away from Israel into the greater Gentile world. And so when Jesus gave his great commission, go and make disciples of all nations, I think they were at the top of this mountain looking out at, at pagan cities, at cities that did not know God, and he's saying, go, make disciples of all nations. Here are a couple of views of the scenery, so don't miss this if you go to the Holy Land. Let's go to the Mount of Olives now. This is the view from the Mount of Olives back to Jerusalem, right? And this is the view of the Mount of Olives from Jerusalem. You see this tall tower? That is the Russian Church of the Ascension, one of the traditional sites for Jesus' ascension. Some of these are traditional. We're not sure of the exact site, but that's a possibility. There's also a mosque that's also a shrine that is said to be where Jesus ascended. And see this on the, on the right? That's supposed to be one of Jesus' footprints as he took off. Quit laughing. I don't know about that. And you know what? It doesn't matter. What matters is Jesus ascended into heaven and he's coming back. So now that we have our background, let's look at how we're to live our lives cloud-based, okay? Here's where we're going, okay? Cloud-based living means keeping on mission, keeping on track, and keeping on watch. Three things. Cloud-based living means keeping, number one, say it with me, on mission, Number two, cloud-based living means keeping on track. 
And number three, cloud-based living means keeping, keeping on watch. So let's go through the, the scriptures here, starting with the Great Commission. Cloud-based living means keeping on mission. And that's the mission of Matthew 28, 16 to 20. And a week later, Jesus repeats it essentially with Acts 1.8, doesn't he? It's really just an elaboration of the same truth that when Jesus left this earth, he left us the mission. He left us his work and his ministry and his kingdom in our hands. Do you remember a, a, a few months ago, I think about nine months ago in the chronology of things, remember when Jesus had told the apostles that upon this rock I will build my, my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. This is that. This is the great commission that he's given us the keys. We are to stay on mission. Realize the sacred trust of Jesus' kingdom and keep on mission. There are two lines I want you to say with me. Part of saying on mission is go make disciples. Go make disciples. Be my witnesses. Great Commission from Mount Arbel, perhaps, to the mountaintop in Galilee. He says, go and make disciples of all nations, right? That's the mission. Stay on mission. Then a week later in Jerusalem, with Jerusalem in view, a cross on the Mount of Olives, you know, when Jesus was looking from the Mount of Olives, he could see into Jerusalem, he could see the spot, he could see the place, where he died on the cross, he could see the, the area or the place of the empty tomb. My work is finished, Father, and he ascends into heaven. We stay on mission, and he said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will what? Be my witnesses. You will be my witnesses. Jesus had told them on Monday, Thursday night, very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I have been doing. We're going to do what Jesus does. That's staying on mission. And they will do even greater things than these because I go to my Father. Look at part of that mission, right? By the way, in verse 17 of Matthew 28, it says the apostles who had been seeing him for 30 days, 33 days post-resurrection, it says they worshipped him on the mountain, but some what? Some doubted. Let's throw stones, right? Because we never doubt. We may be Christ followers, but we always trust. We never doubt, right? Hmm. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Behind that mask, I don't know what your, what kind of facial expression you. The mask is a good dis, uh, concealer, right? Some doubted. The word for doubt here is really fascinating, because it's not the normal word I would have expected. It's the word distazo in Greek. Distazo means to stand in two places. It means a double stance, going two ways at the same time, straddling the fence or sitting on the fence. So when, when Jesus was about to give the Great Commission, some were worshiping him, but some of his followers, and I believe it was the apostles and probably the other disciples also, but some still doubted. Some had one foot here and one foot there. At my age, I've got to be careful not to... Do that too far apart? <laughs> How about us today? Are we on mission? Or do we have a foot in two places? Do we doubt by, yes, I'm a Christian, but I don't really live like it. I say Jesus is everything to me, but is he really? This time of stay-at-home and pandemic should be a very revealing to you. 
if you didn't experience Jesus' closeness, if you didn't reach out to do his ministry, then what is it me? Are you two-standed, a double stance? Some doubt it. We need to stay on mission. The church needs to be on mission. We need to be about, go make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. That means bringing new people into the family of God, making disciples who weren't followers of Jesus before, and then taking them and training them and developing them, teaching them to obey, right? Not teaching just to know facts, teaching us to do facts. We know the Scriptures and we're eager to live them out and obey them. And then Jesus says those incredible words. I'm with you always, even to the ends of the age. I love it. Quite literally, he says, I myself am. So it's like, I am. It's like another I am statement. I am with you all the days until the consummation of the age. So people, is Jesus with us right now? He is indeed. People, is Jesus with us? through the coronavirus. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is with us, and He's coming back. Stay on mission, people, because we have the mission of all authority. Remember verse 18, all authority is given to me, therefore go. So He's saying, this is my authority. I'm sending you under my authority. We are sent out with Jesus' authority. What if people make fun of us? What if people don't believe? What if people persecute? That doesn't matter. It doesn't change the fact that the authority of Jesus Christ has sent us on mission. And I thought, because it was Ascension Day and this is the first day we've been able to be back together, I thought, what an important message as the church regathers to get us on mission. Go make disciples, baptizing, teaching to obey, Remember that Jesus is with us always and we are going out on mission with His authority and His presence. I will be with you always. Presence of the Holy Spirit. You know, businesses that, that thrive are those that do what they do well and don't do what they don't do well. Right? I mean, have you ever gotten a burger at Chick-fil-A? No, because you need to eat more chicken. Right? Right, have you ever noticed how limited the menu is at like five guys? You know, it's very limited because this is, this is what we do. I think sometimes the church, which I do all this stuff, and some of it is not being on mission. Some of people's expectations. Maybe some of mine, maybe some of yours are not on mission. Cloud-based living means, number one, staying on mission. I talked right through it all. Go. By the way, I love this. The first two letters of, letters of the word gospel are G-O. Go. Right? Number two. Cloud-based living means keeping on track. Keeping on track. It's realizing the sacred mystery of God's infinite wisdom and knowledge and our lack of it, right? We walk by faith, not by sight. Jesus says two things, right? He says, number one, it is not for you to know. Say that with me. It is not for you to know some things. How do you like that? And then secondly, he said, wait for the gift my Father promised, right? Wait for the gift my Father promised, the Holy Spirit. Wait for the Holy Spirit. Well, wait a minute. If I'm supposed to be on mission, why do I have to wait? Why don't I just go do it? Because we don't do this on our own. We do it under the power of the Holy Spirit. Wait for the Holy Spirit's presence and power. Here's the ascension. Jesus is about to go, 
and he says to wait for the promise, and they're like, okay, here it comes. They keep waiting for this, right? Here it comes. Lord, is this now the time you're going to restore the kingdom to Israel, right? Remember, like we thought that was going to happen when you fed the 5,000, and no, it wasn't. And we thought that was going to happen maybe on Palm Sunday, and no, that wasn't. Now is it time? Because we get these ideas, we put God in our own box. I have a Dwayne box I try to put God in for him to fulfill my definitions and my expectations and my wishes and my wants. But God does not fit in a Dwayne box. Or in your box. And when we try to do that, we're off track. It is not for you to know the times or the seasons that God has put in his own authority. I think sometimes when we're studying the second coming in prophecy that we're ignoring Jesus' words because Jesus basically tells us there's a lot about that we're not going to know. And that's okay, right? Are you okay with not knowing everything you wish God would tell you? Why, Lord? When, Lord? Who, Lord? There's stuff we don't know, but we have to learn to be on track by being comfortable and confident and walking by faith, not by sight. It is not for you to know some things. We trust God. We walk by faith, not by sight. There's some things that are my place, but some things are God's place. Some things are in my hands, not a lot. Trust in God's hands. My surrender my control. The coronavirus, everybody keeps talking about how everything has changed. And I think it remains to be seen where we go from here about lots of things, you know. Are we ever going to shake hands again? Are we ever going to hug again? Are you ever going to be packed back into a bus or an airplane again? Are we ever going back to school? Can we ever be in church without masks? You guys really look ridiculous. <laughs> it's kind of funny because I'm like, I'm kind of used to it, and then I realize this looks really strange. But you know what? All, everything may change. The world may shake. But God hasn't changed. The Bible hasn't changed. we got to be cloud-based with our living, that Jesus came from the clouds, went back to the clouds, and he gave us a commission and a mission. We stay on mission. We stay on track. And number three, cloud-based living means we keep watch, being on watch, on mission, on track, and on watch. We realize the blessed hope of Jesus' second coming, and we keep on watch. We watch for Jesus' coming. I know it's in the minor key, but that song, Even So Come, we have very few songs to point the church directly, explicitly, to the hope of the second coming. Because people, we are the bride of Christ. We are to be like a bride waiting for her groom, keeping watch. Jesus went into the clouds. So, as after Jesus says, you're going to be my witnesses, the word witness, by the way, is the word martyr. Interesting. You're going to start with Jerusalem, then you're going to go a little farther to Judea, surrounding areas, and you're going to go to Samaria, places further away that are different from you, to the ends of the earth, to every culture, every people, tribe, nation, and tongue, the whole world. Because God so loved the world. Right? And that's our mission. So as Jesus is saying those things, he starts to write. Those are his last words on earth. Don't you think the final words Jesus spoke on earth have special significance? You will be my witnesses. You Go, make disciples of all nations. 
Keep on watch. Keep on target, on track. I make up new points as I go. Keep on watch. Watch for Jesus' return. Why do you stand here is one of the things the angels said, right? Why do you stand? I have lots of, I feel for them, right? They're like, what? And I think they had a realization, oh, he did leave. Oh, we are to obey. We are commissioned to carry on his kingdom. People, do we realize when we do ministry as Christians or as a church, We're doing Jesus' ministry. It shouldn't be about anything else. But the other stuff, it's all nonsense. We're doing Jesus' ministry. It's sacred. We're accountable. And then the angel said, why do you stand here gazing up into heaven? I think I would be standing. He said, listen, Jesus will come back in the same way, you just watched him go into heaven. Jesus is coming again. Say that with me. Jesus is coming again. Jesus is coming again. That's our blessed hope. Titus chapter 2 says, While we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's our blessed hope. As we draw to a close today, Jesus spends an entire chapter during Holy Week talking about the end times. It's Matthew 24. Make sure you read that today. I've gotten a lot of questions. I've heard a lot of Christians talking about, is the coronavirus part of the pangs of childbirth of indicating that Jesus is coming again? The first thing I would say to you is, He's closer to coming again now than he was before, always, right? He is coming back. We're not sure when, but it looks sooner rather than later. But he also told us it is not for you to know the times or the seasons. Here are some of Jesus' own words, though. Listen. He said, watch out that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name claiming I am the, the Messiah and will deceive many. Are people being deceived today? Are they following things as if they were Messiah? People are deceived. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Jesus says this, Then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then all the peoples of the earth will mourn when they see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Keep watch, because Jesus is coming on the clouds of heaven. But about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. What are we supposed to do about the coming of Jesus? Keep on watch. Be ready. Be watchful. I think a lot of people, I think the, the pandemic has shown us how easily people will give up freedom, a little scary. How people, how a global leader could arise through a crisis like this and people would run after. If somebody arose somewhere in the world today with the cure for coronavirus, I think a lot of nations might follow. I don't know. And then we have people who want to track us and put apps on our phone and chip us and drone us. 
and give us cards saying that we have the antibodies or not, I'm going to tell you this, I'm not doing that. You read Revelation 13. Revelation 13 talks about the beast. The beast says, the beast forced all people, great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hands or on their foreheads so that they could buy or sell unless they had the mark, which is the name of the beast and the number of his name, and that number is 666. There's a lot about that we don't understand. It'll all come true perfectly. But I wouldn't be receiving the mark if I were you. I mean, please let me prepare you. Say no. Starve to death. Do whatever you have to do. Don't take a mark. Folks, we need to have our, not just, we don't need our heads in the cloud as though we don't think, but we do need our hearts in the cloud. We want our hearts to be cloud-based, right? Which means we stay on mission, on track, and on watch. In closing, what would happen if the pilot of your airplane accidentally navigated just a little bit off course? Let's say one degree. If a pilot of an airplane is one degree off, for every degree you fly off course, you will miss your target by 92 feet for every mile you fly. One degree. 92 feet for every mile you fly. So for every 60 miles you fly, you will miss your target by one mile. So imagine, imagine flying from JFK in New York to LAX. Okay? Cross the continent. If you're one degree off, it will put you nearly 50 miles off course. Folks, as Jesus followers who are commissioned and cloud-based, we don't want to be even one degree off, right? Let's stay on mission, on track, and on watch. Would you guys pray with me? Jesus, we thank you for the hope, the blessed hope of the appearing, the glorious second coming, the appearing of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. No matter what happens in this world, nothing can take away our blessed hope. And Father, I pray today for us, I pray for your people in this crazy world that we live in. Help us not to be even one degree off course, but with all that we have and all that we are, let us live cloud-based. Keep us on mission. Let this church be about mission, about Jesus Christ, the Bible and the Great Commission, and nothing else. Help us to stay on track, not worried about all the things we don't understand or know, insisting on our own way, but waiting upon you, God, waiting for your Holy Spirit. And help us, help us to be on watch, no matter what this world may bring. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Lord, today I pray that you would encourage your people. It's been a blessing to be here together in person. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I pray for everybody here and for everybody who might be watching live stream now or later that they will very much take seriously the fact that Jesus is coming again. And Jesus said, when he comes, all the nations will mourn. That's because they're not ready to meet Jesus. People who are ready to meet Jesus, who have asked for forgiveness, who have given our lives to Jesus, we will not mourn. We will party. But those who aren't ready, those who have rejected Jesus, who have not fallen, or who have been double-stanced, they will mourn. 
Because what we do in this life echoes into eternity. Father God, I pray for all here that we will seek and find you right now. We say, Jesus, I want you to be my Lord and Savior. Please forgive me. Take over my entire life. Let me be all and completely yours, not one degree off. And Jesus, it's in your name we pray and commit this. Whew. You guys are much better than a tripod and a cell phone. Thank you. No, no, thank you. That's a blessing. Thank you so much, really. So we're not passing things out. We're not taking offering. On your way out, if you'd like to give offering, there will be plates by the door. Just put it in. Um, a lot of given in alternative means over the, the, the previous weeks. You can mail checks. You can online bill pay. You can pay with a credit card at our website. Uh, you may continue to do so. It's touch-free. It's, it's fine. It's worked. I thank you for your generosity because the church, we have no funding other than what God gives us, right? This is us. So thank you very much. As you go, I am going to ask you, would you guys, when you're socializing, would you wear your masks? Please keep a little bit of distance. And when you're visiting, would you just go on out? We're going to ask everybody to go out the, the lobby door and do your visiting outside. Okay, it's a safety precaution. So if everybody, don't, don't visit in here, just go outside where the fresh air could blow any potential germs away and uh, let's do our visiting there, okay? Thank you everybody who's joined us on live stream today. We really, really appreciate it. Ask that God would bless you and inspire you today. Thanks again. Peggy and I are going to put on our masks. We'll see you out front, okay? Thanks again.